Hello everybody, this is Nick Simpson from JustTrafficProfit.com and this is the second video in the series about Audacity, podcasting, and network marketing and how to use these tools to uh, effectively generate leads for any business or website that you may be involved with. Okay, um, basically we left off where we had recorded a single track here on Audacity and you can see the one we made right above here. and I don't have my speakers set up where I can play this one and, and you can really hear what I'm doing, but you can visually see what I'm going to talk about. If you were wanting to have a background music or some sounds on top of or along with your voice during your podcast and, uh, and your recordings, it's very easy to do. If this was what you wanted to say in your message, and you want to record sound after it, you can simply record again and you could play a CD player in the background or play a song on your computer and as long as your microphone can hear your speakers you could record a second track and as you see that it's showing right here that it's recording a whole new track and right now they're layered uh, on top of each other and you can adjust this and, and move things around but the point is this that this is a multi-track recorder so there's a lot of things you can do with this uh, it's really a robust program for a free one guys but the main thing I wanted to show you guys in this video is how to actually export um, your audio to an mp3 format now you do always want to save your projects but when you save a project, it does not save it as MP3. So we're just going to call this um, new test because I already have some. But when you save it, it's just a project file for Audacity. If you're wanting to actually export it as an MP3 file, then you do need to go to the file dropdown and use the export feature. Now here is something that you see, and these are actually the ID3 tags that we referred to in the last video, where you can um, add some basically metadata, ID3 tags are very similar, to your file. And one thing this lets you do is actually create a template, and that's exactly what I've done uh, with my Webmaster Business Plan audios. And as you can see here that um, you know we have a title, an album, and track number. And guys, most of this is, is for if you're going to put something on iTunes or a site like that, it will pull from this data and use that as a part of the information about the file. So it is important that you accurately describe what you have and take the time to add this information in there. It doesn't take but a couple seconds, guys. Okay, now that you have this information, you would edit it, obviously, and make it correct here. But I'm going to go ahead and say okay. And the next screen you see it's actually going to let you save this as an mp3 and I wanted everybody to understand that you can save this as many different file types okay if someone ever needs um, you know uh, AC3 file format or they need it in a WMA format that's no problem you can save it as whatever you want um, FLAC files are becoming really popular they are a lossless format they're a very large file size but they are lossless so if you're wanting the, the highest, best quality audio, FLAC or um, WAVE are the way to go. But again, for size and quality, you cannot beat MP3. And that's what everybody's using today anyhow, guys. So that's what you want your recording saved as. And it tells you your tracks are mixed down two stereo channels uh, in the exported file. So you do have true... Um, uh, stereo recordings when you use multiple tracks. Now, guys, if you're recording from a single microphone, it is impossible to create a real stereo recording. But what Audacity does to mimic that, because it knows you're only using a single microphone, is it will run track one on the left and track two on the right, which is really a cool feature, guys, if you think about it. Um, I just think that's neat that they do that. It's nothing really uh, that you can change. That's just how it functions. Now, if you needed a higher quality for voice, to be honest, guys, 40, uh, 400 hertz is is fine. If you're going to record a guitar and some, you know, if you got a band and you want to record it, you may want to bump that up to a higher quality. But as far as what we're doing, that's as good as you need need it to be. 
Okay, and if you get your recordings and they sound really junky and there's a lot of feedback or you know similar things like this, do try to turn down your microphone up here.